Hey guys, it's Moody here, and I know I haven't uploaded in a while, but over the last couple months, I've been getting a lot of emails and comments asking me about PK Hex and whether or not it still works. And the short answer is no, not with the method that my previous video had. The browser injection method was patched up, I believe, after 9.2. So if you've updated your 3DS since then, then the browser injection method does not work anymore. However, today I was actually looking around to see if there was another method that was available and I came across another one so today I'm going to show you how you can go and install the homebrew launcher and also use PK hex without any flashcard and just even if you have the most updated 3ds because I updated my 3ds today and I installed the YouTube app today and it just works perfectly so that's the first thing you'd like to do just maybe update your 3DS if you want, and you want to install the YouTube app from the Nintendo eShop. Especially in case, you know, they may take it down, we don't know, but just to be safe, you want to try and do it as soon as possible, because uh, if you don't have that app, then this doesn't work. But, I'm going to link the website in the description to where you can actually get the software for this. It's going to require you to use a uh, PC, but I think that this also will work with a Mac. I'm not sure about PKHex itself as a program because I haven't, but I know installing the homebrew itself will work on a Mac because it's just files. So this is the method that I used and at the site you want to scroll down to preparing your SD card and it just quickly tells you what you have to do. It's very very straightforward. If you want to just click the homebrew starter kit and it's going to download a file called starter.zip and to open this you either need winrar or winzip and you save it to wherever you want so for me i made a folder just for this we have save manager and starter the save manager is what we're going to use later so if you already have homebrew installed then i will link you well not link you but i will fast forward the video to where you can just start with the save manager but here if you're starting to install homebrew just from scratch then you click the starter then it'll open up the winrar or the winzip whatever you have and it will include these three files you want to extract to and then you click i don't know desktop or whatever for me it's tube hack tube hacks so that's where i'm going to extract these files to and just close that out so you see all the files are here and then the next part of this you want to have your sd card from your 3ds whether it's new or old both of them work uh, if you're using the new 3DS, just as long as you have a micro SD card reader, the SD card is actually in the back of the 3DS. I found that out today under the plate screws. So after that, this is the root of your SD card. You take the 3DS file and the boot 3DS file and you just drag them over there and you're done. In my case, I'm not going to replace the files in this destination because I don't have to but that's all you do and then you're done with this step that's it so what you want to do is just safely eject your card and then you're gonna put it back in your 3ds and we'll go from there so when you have everything back in your 3ds you're gonna want to go to your settings and make sure you have YouTube installed because after you edit this next setting I don't believe you can access the eShop because you are going to change your DNS settings you're going to go to your internet settings connection settings and then whatever connection you're on you're going to want to edit that connection in my case it's connection one and then I'm going to change the settings there and I'm going to scroll once to the right and then click DNS Usually it should be on auto obtain and if by for any reason you want to get rid of homebrew you can just set it back to auto obtain and you can just delete the files you put on the root of your SD card but here you want to go to detailed setup and you want to change the primary DNS to 107.211.140.065 and you want to leave the secondary DNS alone. After that you can click OK and then you click save click OK and then you can test or not test your connection but it should work as long as you have a good connection and from there you want to scroll back to your uh, home page and for this next part you're gonna want to know what firmware you're on so in order to find that out it's in your system settings on the front page you'll say in the bottom right corner what firmware you're on and you're gonna scroll over to the YouTube app and open that 
for this, it's going to ask you what firmware you're on and if you're on the new or old 3DS. In my case, I'm on the newest firmware, so all I need to do is click that and then it's going to take a while to load and then as long as you did everything correctly, it'll load fine and it'll crash. It would crash before it loads, but I already did this before, so it already opened up for me. And here's the homebrew launcher. So the homebrew launcher actually comes with a, a bunch of cool things, like you have a region free bleh, <laughs> launcher, so you can play region free games. And then you can also play GBA games, I believe, or some other homebrew stuff. So it's pretty cool. This is what it will look like once you installed it correctly and that's about it if for any reason you don't want to have this like i said you can revert your dns and you can also just delete the two files that you put on the root of your sd card and it'll be back to normal uh, if you change your dns i believe that you can access the eShop. just keep that in mind but if you for some reason have any other internet issues then just uh, you can tempor temporarily revert the DNS to auto, um, auto renew or auto check or whatever it is and it'll work fine. So for this next part is where the PK hex comes in and you're going to want to download another file. The next file you're going to want to install on the root, not the root, but your SD card is going to be the save manager and I'll have a link to that as well in the description. It worked the same way as the starter is that you open it and then it has the 3DS uh, already there for you with the save manager and you can extract that to wherever you want and then just drag and drop it or just extract it directly to where you want it. The reason I didn't put this together with the other one is in case it got too complicated for some people but alternatively you could have also already placed this on your SD card beforehand but I just wanted to show the steps that I took to do it. So I'm going to extract this to my desktop in the tube hacks. So there we go and that's fine. And then we have this save manager over here. So once you go back to your um, SD card, your 3DS SD card, you want to navigate to the 3DS folder. And then all you have to do is drag and drop save manager to that part of it. You can um, just do that and I'm not going to replace it because I already have it installed. And that's literally it. This is the next easiest part. So now you're going to safely eject your SD card and we're going to go back into 3DS and I'll show you what to do next. So we're back in the homebrew launcher and now if you scroll all the way down you'll have save manager as your last thing. So you want to click that. Now here you see system settings but if you use your d-pad and you scroll left and right it changes the app that you're on. So as long as you have your Omega Ruby in your 3DS or even the downloaded one then this should work. I haven't tried it with a downloaded one but seeing as that it can pick up any app in the home screen it should work as well I'm gonna be using my cartridge one so you click that and then you click a and then it'll come up with a bunch of really weird screens you might be freaked out but it'll be okay so here it's gonna show backup save data and import save data you're gonna want to back up the save data and then ba it backs it up for you and then all you do is click exit and then from here you can just click uh, start and then go to the home menu again. So what this is going to do is just going to put the save on your SD card which you can easily import into PK Hex and from there you can edit whatever Pokemon you want and then you can just import it back in so we're going to go do that next. So once your SD card is in, you should see that a new folder has popped up called Save Data Backup, and this is your save. So just to be sure and just to be careful, you may want to back this file up. You can just click copy and uh, paste it to your desktop or something just in case you mess up or do something wrong, you have a copy of it. So I have a copy on my desktop right now just in case. And then you want to open up PK Hex and I'm going to go to Tools, Toggle Box Interface and this is what it's going to look like. I haven't updated my PK Hex in a while but I'm going to link you to um, the most updated version that there is. And we're going to click Open and we're going to navigate to the Save Data Backup by going to your root and then Save Data and then Main. And it's going to open up your file. So here are all your Pokemon. For me, I already had a bunch imported from the last time, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to like show you a really quick edit. So we're going to view Latios, and we'll change it to Latios. It was originally Latios just because I wanted to test this, and then you can set the Pokemon. Whoop! I actually 
I did not change it, and then you set the Pokemon, and it's Eladio. So, this is just a really quick edit to show you that it works. So now you're going to want to navigate to the Save tab over here and Export Save, and it, you want to make sure it has the same name and just replaces the file there. Do you want to replace it? You click Yes, and then you are done here. And you can safely eject your SD card and go back into your homebrew menu. So now that we're back in the homebrew launcher, we're going to navigate all the way back down to the save manager. Then we find Pokemon Ruby or Sapphire, whichever you prefer. You click OK, and then it's going to open up the same weird sequence of screens. And here you just click Import Save Data. It restores it. Then you can click Exit, and you can also click Start to go back to the home screen, and you are done. So next time you open your Omega Ruby or Alpha Sapphire, whatever changes you made to your Pokemon files there, they should have gone through. It seems like a lot, but once you have the actual uh, files installed on the root of your SD card, all you have to do is just export and import the save files, and you're pretty much done. So, just to show you that it worked, I'm going to open up my Omega Ruby, and I will show you that it worked. So, I know people have been wanting an updated tutorial, so this is it. And if you have any questions, you can always put them in the comments. I'll try and answer it, but I'm not the creator of this program, and obviously all the credit's going to be in the description. So, like, huge thanks to the person that did it, because, you know, some people just don't have the time for it. But... Uh, I'm gonna show you that my PC should have Eladios now instead of Eladios. And there you go. So that's the box that was there. And it worked. This was obviously my HM slave. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If it helped, you can leave a like. And if you have any questions, you can either email me or comment or twi Twitter me, I guess. I will also have the developer's link in my description because if you have any questions relating to actually like the homebrew itself he will definitely help you a lot better than I could because when I did this I had no problems doing it so I can try my best to you know help with the technical stuff but it in the end will not be as good as if he helped so hopefully you guys enjoy this video I will definitely be uploading more soon my life has been busy I'm sorry but I seriously seriously love you all thank you all for being here and just being the greatest subscribers ever so I love you all and I hope you guys have a wonderful day and bye